Hi, my name is Jason Dion. I'm the Mitigation Research Director at the Canadian Institute for Climate Choices. So net zero is about pulling as many GHG emissions out of the atmosphere as we put in. And so getting to net zero GHG emissions is what the science says is necessary by mid-century in order to avoid the severe impacts of climate change. This involves shifting to technologies and energy systems that don't produce emissions, or where we do produce any remaining emissions, pulling them out of the atmosphere and sequestering them permanently underground instead of leaving them up there to trap heat and contribute to climate change. There isn't just one potential pathway to net zero, there's actually multiple ways that we could get there. They all rely on differing mixes of technologies and solutions, and they depend on a number of drivers, many of them of which are uncertain. So things like climate policy action in the rest of the world, the availability and cost of key GHG reducing technologies. So a lot of what will affect the pathway we end up on is uncertain, but a lot of it is also within our control. Things like the policies we adopt at home, the investment choices we make, the infrastructure we build, and how we make sure that the transition is fair and inclusive. Some of the changes are impossible to predict, but other parts of the transition are already clear. In many ways, life won't be that different than it is today. We'll still use energy, but we'll use it in different ways and different types of energy when it comes to how we heat buildings, how we move people and goods, and how we fuel industry. Electric vehicles are likely to be the dominant type of personal vehicle. Uh, the energy efficiency of our buildings might improve a lot. Other changes might be happening behind the scenes. So the way that we produce electricity, we might shift from natural gas at times to wind and solar. And these changes might not always be obvious to people. A lot of the technologies that we're talking about are much more energy efficient. So not only would households be spending less on energy than they do today, but even when you account for the purchase costs of furnaces, of vehicles, we find that households would actually be saving money relative to today. I think the big takeaway is that exactly how Canada's net zero transition will play out is still uncertain. It's going to depend on the choices we make. It's going to depend on larger forces outside of Canada's control. We need to manage that risk and uncertainty, but we can't let it justify delay or inaction. We need to move forward starting today.